Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, bringing you a grand solar minimum update Wednesday, June 10th at 11.30 p.m. Mountain Time. Now, tonight we're going to discuss what solar minimum is and what a grand solar minimum is because many people have got it twisted. You're looking at the last 170 years of data of our sun overlaid by multiple data forcing sets, meaning the CMIP6 is in red. CMIP5 is in the bluish teal up here. So these are different uh, solar models that use, are used to predict solar activity. And you can see the solar prediction using CMIP6 of solar activity for the next one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, or 10 cycles is way down here, well below 1361 watts per square meter. Very similar to the centennial minimum and, also, and equally similar to the Dalton and other grand minimas. We're entering the modern eddy grand minima, which could last 150 years, which may be 14 solar cycles. And 24 is the opening cycle, the first one. 25 will be the second cycle, 26 the third cycle, 27 will be the fourth cycle, and so on and so forth. It may last for 14 solar cycles, with the deepest one being the seventh cycle in. The coldest and deepest cycle may be cycle 30, maybe 31. But every 11 years, we have a peak and a trough in solar activity. So five years from now, during the peak of 25, the sun will be alive and flaring. And this is bad news for humanity because our magnetosphere is waning and we're entering a magnetic excursion. The shields are down. And with solar activity this low and flaring occurring, we could see major perturbations to the grid. And then five years from then, around 2030, we're going to see some of the coldest, harshest winters we've ever seen since the 1800s. Crop failures and famine unseen worldwide in the entire modern world. That some people are unaware of this scenario. So let me bring you further into the historical context here where we're looking at the CMIP6 data with the historical data overlaying upon it, which you will clearly see that empires end based on solar activity and grand solar minimas. Here is 0 AD, the fall of Rome after the Roman warm. Here is when the Vikings prospered, the medieval warm, and then the end of the Vikings, around 700 AD, and the Little Ice Age. We'll get back to this graph, but I want to talk about Thor News, which is why I'm doing this video. Someone sent me a link to some videos he's done recently, and I want to just break down this individual without trying to badmouth him too much. He has as many views as our channel does, yet he's been on the air for many more years. Very few people watch his videos. He barely gets 1,000 views per video. And he's typically angry and aggressive. Now, I liked his content and I subscribed to the channel years ago. You see how I'm not subscribed now. And I befriended him. I even threw him a bone two years ago at our first LeeCon and I sent him $300 to do our promo. Well, he never gave me back any material, never gave me a promo. I spent hours sending him pictures and clips and information. He never created anything. He just took the money. And then a few days before LeeCon was like, oh, dude, I, I forgot or whatever. Anyway, so there's that. That's my first experience with the guy. He burned me then. And then someone sent me this video, which just came out eight hours ago. And let's listen to what Thor has to say. This uneducated pathetic man that lives in his mother's basement. And so, I don't know, I just, I, I think it's cute that, you know, the more the sun begins to wake up, the more the guys, the gang who sold y'all a grand solar minimum for the last five years are freaking out. Now, first of all, I don't, none, no one who's talking grand solar minimum is freaking out but this guy. But let, let's let him continue. And so now we have a giant sunspot 
face in earth it is popping off magnetic filaments um multiples so there the sunspot facing earth is the smallest that can register as a sunspot it's not gigantic which he just claimed it's in fact the smallest the spot can be to actually become a sunspot and we'll prove that to you after his rant and the gigantic magnetic filaments are not gigantic and well let's just let him continue it is definitely showing activity it is definitely showing that the sun is waking up and that uh it looks like anyone who put all their eggs in a grand solar minimum basket are totally wrong like it doesn't look like the mini ice age panned out bro this guy is so stupid he doesn't even know how stupid he is first look at his hair and I thought he was like a 23-year-old kid, and he turns out to be a 56-year-old idiot. That's all the further I'll go there. Please, I'm going to link you to that video below. Go watch the rest of his stupid rant while I teach you about the actual science. Let's come over here and check out the gigantic spot that he claims is blasting off filaments. This is the sun, the solar disk. There are no spots on it. There's a small plage up here turning around the limb. And this is the tiniest spot you could possibly have before it gets numbered. Okay, and just just about six years ago, sunspot one two one nine two. I remember it greatly. It's bigger than Jupiter. Was the thirty third largest sunspot recorded in human history? This isn't even the biggest one, but this would be a big spot here. This one two one nine four is the same size as the spot that we have today. Tiniest spot you can get which shows you how grossly incompetent Thor News is on reporting on the sun. They have no idea what they're talking about. Thor News, if you're listening, this is a tiny sunspot, just like AR22465 <laughs> that's on the solar disk right now. And this is a gigantic spot. So there's, or 2765. In fact, I think 2765 might be even smaller than this spot. And it probably is. So. Let's just clear the, the wind there that he has no idea what he's talking about. Second, the sunspot cycle. There's solar max and solar minimum that happen about every five and a half years. Solar max and then solar minimum five and a half years later. Five and a half after that, max and minimum. Now, these 11-year solar cycles are not an actual solar polar reversal. They're just half of the actual solar polar reversal, the complete reversal of the sun. And what I mean by that is that in one solar cycle, one 11 year cycle, this one here, we're only seeing the, the, the solar polar reversal from north to south. And then it will be a whole nother cycle where it goes from south to north and so on and so forth. So it takes 22 years for a full solar polar reversal. And sometimes grand minimas contain three of those. And you can see here where we are. We are at the deepest solar minimum in over a hundred years and that tiny little spot is not making anyone in the grand solar minimum community confused the only one is confused is thor news so let me bring you here and clear some more information up what we're looking at here is the yearly average sunspot numbers from 1610 to 2017 the central england temperature above and you can see here the Maunder minimum, the Dalton minimum, Centennial, and the Modern Eddy minimum. The Modern Eddy is going to be a grand solar minimum, like the Maunder minimum, where temperatures drop. See how temperatures dropped here for about 65 years? Yeah, because within that 65 years, there were six solar cycles. And here, the temperature dropped during the Dalton minimum. That was during two solar cycles, 10, 20 years. This drop here during the centennial minimum was 10, 20, 30 years long. Three cycles. Are you picking it up? We just put it down. The next grand minima, many people are calling a super grand minima, which would be similar to the Oort or other very long minimas like the Maunder, where they may encompass up to 150 years. Some solar grand minimas last for 14 solar cycles which means every 11 years, the sun will wake up and go to sleep again. Wake up and go to sleep again, but each time weaker and weaker and weaker. And we're also entering a magnetic reversal, which causes our magnetosphere to weaken. So even minor perturbations 
from the sun, including coronal mass ejections, well, it's going to cause bad things on Earth because our shields are down. So that's the science. We're still in a very deep minimum, could last all the way throughout 2021 and maybe half of 2021. It's anyone's guess. We've, we're in uncharted territory. But the fact that there is a tiny sunspot flaring on the earth is not getting anyone's panties in a bunch but Thor News because no one's watching his channel. There are cycles within cycles and trends within trends. And the one trend that I've noticed is that most people on the internet that have been around for a decade that don't have that many subscribers or viewers have no idea what they're talking about. The proof is in the pudding. What are you putting out? What are they listening to? And what are they picking up? Here's the drop down into the new modern grand minima, which happens every several hundred years. The Sporer, the Maunder, and now the Eddy. The Wolf, the Sporer, the Maunder, the Eddy. There's always minor perturbations. This would be the same as the Dalton. This would be same as the Centennial. But the grand minima is what you're living now. And that means proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. Just like in other grand minimas, empires fail. I'll leave you links to this graph below and you can do your own homework. And go check out Thor News' full expose on why we're wrong and he's right. He also believes COVID-19 is a pandemic and you need face panties. And that's boom. Share this with like-minded people. Stick with the winners. If you're looking for facts, Stick with scientists, typically those that have been in the field and taught at university like myself. People that live in the basement that are 50 begging for donations. Well, and they use cartoons as a hook. That's something else totally. We love each and every one of you. Thank to, thanks to our one-time donors. I love Thor News. And he's just lost his way. Let's bring him back. Be safe. We love you, everyone.